Okay guys, so today we are going to do a video actually um, comparing our experiences between Universal Studios and Disney World. Because, to be honest with you, I have a lot of comments about how Universal was versus Disney, so yes. here we go. Go ahead. Alright, so yeah, so um, as you guys may have seen in the last video, we were able to go to Disney back in April, and we did have the experience now in July. First of all, I don't recommend going to any park, no matter what, during the holiday. I don't think we really put into consideration that it was the 4th of July weekend, and there was going to be a lot of people there, so we are not blind to that fact during this whole experience that we're going to talk to you about in Universal, but this is just basically how we felt during that entire time. Yeah, um, there was... We're going to divide this between a few different topics that we're going to start off with so that we don't, you know, we can pinpoint everything. So we're going to start off with the apps first, and then we'll go into people, ride times, the food, the prices, the experiences we had between everything, and then the amount of walking we made. So, starting off with the apps. So because I'm more of the techie one, um, yes. <laughs> but she's more experienced in Disney World, I can honestly say Magic Kingdom, because we all needed to go to Magic Kingdom. The application for the Disney parks is way better than the Universal parks. Yes. That was very disappointing, in my opinion, that Universal was very, like... Like, they're, the way that they their apps work is worse than it is at Disney World. For some reason. I don't know what it is. But, like, when you would go into looking for ride times, you have to basically go into, like, two different tabs. You couldn't just open it up and there's a map that shows all the ride times. Or the wait times for everything. Which sucks, because it's like... You want everything in one place, and it's not there. But on the Disney app, you can do everything. Everything's so smooth, and everything's so easy to navigate. But on the Universal app, it's just chaos. Coming know. from someone who is not as techy as she is, Disney app for me, of course, is one of those that I can look on there and easily find everything, pinpoint. Now, I was not on the Universal app um, while we were in Universal. She was on there a majority of the time. But I was able to see kind of like her struggle um, trying to find even like restaurants. There was no list of restaurants that were in Universal um, within the app. So with Disney World, their app is a little bit different. Um, they do show the restaurants, they give you times, and they give you a different link to make reservations if it is one of those yeah. that requires a reservation. Yeah, like for example, like we were doing, we wanted to do like eat, and the mobile order thing only shows like a few restaurants. So it's kind of like, I don't know, it just didn't seem as smooth as it was when we were doing, um, when we were using the Disney app. For me personally, I prefer the Disney app. It's easier to navigate. It's good for people that don't really care about tech. Um, but for me, I just felt like it was not, com like it wasn't the greatest experience. Especially when it's hot and humid and you want to get somewhere and it's like you're still searching through your phone for it. Yeah, I don't know. For me, it was a no. So, I mean, other people have better experiences, but I just, I don't know. I don't like it. Maybe I didn't know how to use it, but you know, that's just the <laughs> thing. Second thing we're talking about is the people. So we had one bad experience with a person um, in the back of the line, or in the back behind yes. us, and I've never experienced that in my life, <laughs> going to any park, <laughs> and I've been, you know, we've gone to parks many, many times in our lives. Um, there are a lot of rude people. There was a lot of, like, messy people there. I don't know why, but I guess because it was the holidays and there's a lot of different people, mm -hmm. stuff like that. There was so many people... Um, it was hard to ride a lot of the things because there was just so much. I think what I do like, though, with Disney is that they have a cutoff of how many people are allowed in the yeah. parks. Now, with Universal, um, they do have an area called City Walk um, where anyone that can go in and eat dinner at any of the bigger restaurants that are not within Universal, um, so you do not need a ticket for that at all, but because there are two parks within Universal, so Universal and Islands of Adventure, uh, there's a lot of people, there was a lot of people, of course, so not only do you have people who are there to party and have a good time, you also have people who are going between parks, so it's, it's very chaotic in my opinion. Yeah, um, very much so. What I do appreciate about Disney World is that they have a limit for for diff the different parks. That way, it's not overly crowded, um, more so than it should be, because of you know 
it, it was just a lot. Yeah, it was overwhelming because, you know, when you're there and it's just the two of you and then you have, like, thousands of people and different personalities and different kinds of people, there's a lot of people that are going to be agitated. Um, it was and, very hot. Yeah, it was really hot and then it rained and there was just so much going on at one time and I was just not having it. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so what I've noticed about Disney World is they do, again, as she said, a reservation system. So, if that's another thing to kind of keep in mind, is that when you go to Disney World, you can't just buy a ticket and go. You actually have to reserve the day. So there has to be actual um, park reservations for the day that you go. If there's no park reservations available, then you can't get in. But with Universal, you have to, you just buy a ticket and you can get in any day that you want that they have on the, you know. Which is, yeah, which is why there was a lot of people. And to some people, it might seem annoying to have a park reservation. At first, I did not like the reservation system, because Disney, before the pandemic, was not like that. But I do believe because of, especially in the summer, it is a good system, because, yeah. of course, people are off, and they're doing vacations with their family. Yeah. But if there's a lot of people, it's kind of hard to enjoy any kind of activity in Universal, and you're paying all that money for basically little experience. Yeah, very little experience, which is now right, we're getting into the next topic of ride times. I was livid with um, Hagrid's. <laughs> I think that Hagrid's yes. was the worst ride time. Oh, and also the Hogwarts Express, which, I mean, that experience was really crazy because we literally had just, we were like, you know, there was no issues with it the whole day, and then we got on the ride or we were getting in line to ride it, and we were almost at the top, and I guess it broke down or something, and we were stuck there, and it started raining, so everybody was packed in there. It rained, and we were stuck there for about almost two hours, so we wasted our time standing there. We thought that it was going to be fixed, because it didn't move, but nothing ever happened. Um, they were like, yeah, we're probably not going to get it fixed anytime soon, so you guys probably just want to go, because of you know, the rain let up, so we were like, okay, and they passed, a, they also gave us, like, fast, early uh, express pass, passes for one ride, but again, they're still, like, we didn't use it, though, yeah, we couldn't use it on certain rides anyway, so we were just kind of, like, whatever, like, we're not, <laughs> we're already agitated, so, you know. With Hagrid's, though, um, keep in mind, that is one of the newer rides in Universal, of course, there's going to be a lot of attraction with the ride, um, but when we were in line, it was really close to closing time. It was, I want to say, at least like an hour, like an hour before closing um, for the un that park um, for the Hagrid's motorbike. Um, it was just a crazy line. I think I would have felt better if they would have cut it off, and even if I couldn't ride it, I would have at least been like, okay, well, there, there's, like, a limit, because uh, we were in that line for close to two hours past even closing, uh, so. Yeah. yeah, and another big thing with these express passes um, is that not every ride is going to have them, so, like, Haggard's is the number one one that everyone wants to ride, and it doesn't have an express mm -hmm. pass, so what happens is, is that it combines, everybody's obviously doing the same thing as us, where they wait, because the amount of times that we looked at the app, like, I looked at it, it was about 150 minutes. 170, 200 minutes. Which is ridiculous for Crazy. writing something that's, like, three minutes long. And it's, like, we waited in line, I think, yeah, about two hours, literally. I think it's just, like, the the way that they kind of set up the flow for lines. Um, excuse me. It's kind of, it's, like, not the easiest flow for people to kind of keep going mm -hmm. and you, you know get on the on the rides yeah because uh, you know you're twisting and turning and going different places so it's kind of hard to kind of get people to yeah keep, keep going. going like i feel like the, <laughs> the haggard's queue is the worst queue it was it's worse than very very big very very long very long <laughs> now too long. don't get us wrong we enjoyed the ride mm -hmm. we thought it was a very very awesome ride it's one of my favorites um, but sometimes when you look at those rides, like Disney World, the, you know, Snow White mine thing, yeah. it's just, it gets ridiculous whenever it's so long, just because people don't have, like, the flow of how yeah. lines are supposed to work. Yeah. Um, so. Uh -huh. And especially in the heat, it's very unbearable. Um. Yes. We had to walk 
because again, the Hogwarts Express was down. So we walked from Universal Studios all the way to Islands of Adventure at the no, end of the day. other side. What? Other way. Was it? No, it is Studios to Islands. Oh, the end of the day. I'm sorry. Yeah. I thought you were like talking The end of the day. Here. So the Hogwarts Express was broken down, um, which is really stupid to me because there were so many people. And so like, the thing is, is that if you're walking from Universal Studios or islands back and forth it's a long walk like it's the longest walk our feet were killing us yes we didn't have the proper shoes and it was raining so like our feet we had to buy shoes we had to do all that crap and it was more work than it shouldn't be but you know it was a very overwhelming day <laughs> it was overwhelming now we're gonna get into the another thing that really did not make me happy was the food she yes. was yeah so the food was really expensive for some freaking reason i don't know we don't have a pass for universal no she does have a pass for disney world but again it's it's a lot worth more worth it i think for disney than it is for universal now that i see it mm -hmm. the food was ass it was horrible now i will say every kind like food in any kind of amusement park is not going to be gourmet ready to serve kind of food i do know that um with disney they do offer kind of the same foods that universal does disney's food i feel like is at least a lot better in terms of taste i got a grilled chicken sandwich it was not i ate it because i was hungry um it was just very dry it was not a good experience at all uh but my my chicken sandwich was Fifteen, seventeen dollars. Yeah. And my food, which I had a burger, and this is at Burger Dig at Jurassic Park. I would recommend not going there because the food was just dry. Very dry. There was no taste. There was very bland. It was cold. Yes. Um. Secondly, the food was too expensive, which I don't get why. Very expensive. Fifteen dollars for a burger and seventeen for a grilled chicken. I don't really get it. Yes. And as well, another thing. And it wasn't any specialty on the burger. I will say, with Disney, they do have specialty, like, burgers where they have different condiments or different kind of, you know, they have, like, that mac and cheese, like, um, hot Cheeto burger. It, it is a little bit on the pricier side, but those are more understandable because they're actual flavored. Mm -hmm. This is just very, like, basic burger, basic. <laughs> There's no condiments, nothing. Yeah. So it's not, like... The food was just not good, and I, the thing is that I haven't been to Universal in so many years. Like, it's been a few years now. Well, I mean, I've been, but I haven't been to the parks in a while. Mm. I think the last time I was at the parks was, like, more than four years ago. Maybe four years ago. I don't remember. I was disappointed um, in the sense that the food, I thought the food would be a little bit decent, but it was not decent at all. Like, there was no decency. When we ate at Magic Kingdom, the food was so good, and they actually put work into it. Like, when we went to, um, just, like, Magic Kingdom's, um, Space Mountain, like, that little, um, food place, the food was good for the price. Mm -hmm. Like, it actually had flavor. So, I was really shocked when I ate at Universal, and I was like, well, this food is not worth the money that it is. So, yes. yeah. We also got the Universal, uh, refillable cups, mm -hmm. which we, I think we were just so tired with the day that we accidentally left our reusable cups um in the store we were just the whole day was just a go 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 hectic um situation so between us trying to get merch for our families ourselves yeah um trying to get you know through the rain we left our reusable cups but i will say i spent 17 to 18 dollars a piece on reusable cups for universal <clears throat> in the long run it does it does give us you know of course free drink with which w also came with icy which i thought was awesome that the ICs were yeah included. those are very um which gets into the next topic of prices because this is where it really pissed me off the so basically i looked online and it's two cups for two people is seventeen ninety nine a piece. It's not seventeen ninety nine a like for each for one um, buying two. So you actually have to pay seventeen ninety nine a piece, which is almost thirty plus dollars, which is ridiculous. But I mean, 
it's a better value because you don't have to keep buying drinks. Like, you could literally refill it. Now, mm -hmm. one of the things that I noticed when I went to Grad Bash and I had a refillable cup that they gave for free is that underneath the cup, there's actually a barcode, which basically tells you that you can't refill it at certain times. So it takes about, I think, every hour you can do it, but you can't refill it all of the time, which is what to keep in mind about those things. But I didn't know that they included ICs. That's actually a really good thing, though. Because yes. if you're, it's really hot and you don't want to just drink, you know, mm -hmm. that that's a great idea to do. I mean, the reusable cups are also in Disney. I don't do reusable cups in Disney, um, even though I do have the pass. I think just because it's, like in Universal, like, it's kind of hard to continuously hold a cup and not just throw it in a bag or whatever. Because, I mean... When you go into, like, one of the rides, let's say, you can't bring that with you. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. and then they don't always stay shut, and next thing you know, you have, like, a big mess um, in the locker. Yeah. So, like, it... Oh, yeah. yeah. In theory, it's not the most... Best thing that I think that we could do. Maybe one of them, we could have one for two people, but I don't... Yeah, like if you're a couple and it's just the two of you, it's better to just have one because getting into the next topic because the lockers are another fun story. Like for example, if you have a family and one of the person has a stroller, you could easily give it to someone and leave it there. But exactly. the lockers, there I'll show a picture of a backpack that I used because a lot of people bring huge bags to mm -hmm. Universal. At Disney World, we did not have lockers at all, I don't think. No. Yeah, because the rides are all, like, kids' rides, so, like, you don't have to use lockers. Now, I understand why they use that Universal, but... So, basically, you have the regular free lockers, which are very small, and they're, like, those little kind of, like, mailbox things that you kind of can slide through mail. Mm -hmm. Very small, so they're not going to fit, like, a North Face backpack. You're going to have to use a very tiny bag, which is very frustrating, because then you have to, you know, those drink cups are not going to fit in there, um, which is another thing to think about. Um, and then you have the bigger lockers, which we had to use the bigger locker at the end of the day for Hagrid's because, you know, we had We'd a lot of stuff. gotten so much merch. Which is, you have to pay for it, which I think it's like, what, 17 It was $15 for a large... Is it for the day? For the day. Okay, so that's not bad, though. It's a good buy. I just think that it is... You, you would have to buy, even if you have nothing, I would go ahead and get a locker in the beginning of the day. And any time that you buy something, just kind of throw your your items in that locker. Yeah, I think I had a huge, um, which was in the haul video, I showed the, universal, the big yeah. universal reusable yeah. bag. That fit perfectly fine in there. But as she said, um, with these rides, there's not really anywhere that you can... Yeah. anything and other than the lockers and the lockers are so itty bitty that unrealistically you can leave um like all your stuff so yeah i don't know i guess next time i'll rent a purse and just sit with my stuff <laughs> yeah like i think that the best investment is don't oh um, one of the things is don't bring huge bags. Like, if it's just the two of you, then yes. I'd recommend, like, one person. Like, what we did was she had one fanny pack, which was great. It worked well. But because I knew that I was going to bring, like, medicine and chargers and everything, I actually had a, I think it's called Waterfly Bag from Amazon. It's, like, $30 or 23 It was very nice. And it's really helpful because it has so many pockets and so much storage, and they fit in the lockers perfectly. So you don't have to keep buying, like, you don't have to buy a $15 locker for a day. Mm -hmm. Um... Yeah. But I do know it's a little bit harder <clears throat> if you have kids yeah. not to have a bigger bag. Uh, we This is the first time that I've been to a park where I'm not using a big bag. I typically bring a backpack or a bigger bat purse type thing. Um, so this is the first time I ever used a fanny pack. I did love it, so yeah. I will use it again. Mm -hmm. It just really depends. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like, fanny packs can sometimes go on rides, but because Universal is mostly, like, coasters, there's no way that you can bring big things like this, like yes. a tote bag or whatever, um, on the rides. What are things about the prices? Yeah, the food was really expensive. The tickets, that's what I was going to get to, the tickets were atrocious. <laughs> <laughs> Um, now she has a Disney pass, so that means that she yes. can kind of just go to the parks whenever she wants because mm -hmm. you know she already has a pass. She doesn't pay for a ticket, 
So that's the only advantage. And she has a 10% or 20% discount. 20%. Which is really good. So if you want to get a pass for Disney, that's a, you know, experience for that. Free um, parking. Yeah, free parking and everything. The parking at... Universal, we went there, we got there before opening, and are really close to opening, and we did not do the preferred parking, because it's $50, so $27 for parking, general parking, and we parked at the very last, like, parking area in the garage, so we were all the way at the top, then we, what else did we do? We paid, like, the tickets were atrocious, they were, I think, depending on the day is how much it costs. So, like, my yes. ticket was 100 because it was July 4th weekend, it was $199. So, because I was paying for her ticket, too, it ended up being over, like, $400 for the two of us, around $423. Um, then I went on Groupon because I'm, like, looking for Universal ticket deals, and they actually had, <clears throat> I think it was, like, Still by the day, but it ended up turning out to be only $398 for the two of us. And it does work really well. I don't think a lot of people use it to their advantage, but it's a way better deal. At least you save a little bit of money, but if you do just pay for it like on the website, you're mm -hmm. going to be paying way, way, way more. The tax is insane on the tickets. Yeah. I mean, I will say with Disney, I don't think that they... That their prices vary just because of the day. It's always just like a, a stagnant price unless you are doing any of their holiday weekend times. So that does mean like July 4th, if they do any big celebration, um, Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party, yeah, uh, the Christmas extravaganza thing that they, they kind of put on as well. Those are a little bit pricier just because those are set events um, that you have to do a separate ticket for. Yeah. But... For Universal, I noticed that it just, they give you like a set pricing and then any time that you click any days, it changes dependent on the day. I don't believe Disney's like that. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, the pricing was ridiculous. The food was atrocious for the price. The merchandise was insanely expensive. Like, $30 for t-shirts, <laughs> $30 for a T-Rex or plushie, and I'm like, what? It's like... Why is it so expensive? It shouldn't even be. And then, like, the f cups were expensive. Everything was really, really, really high at Disney World. I um, mean, at, yeah. at Universal, sorry. <laughs> Everything was priced. And it's weird because Disney World is way more expensive, technically. Yes. But, like, because they're more high-end and people want to go there. But I was just appalled. I think it's just because we do use my 20% discount to our advantage when yeah, we get any that's Disney thing. merch. Um, which is really good. Which is awesome. In, in retrospect, we did get a lot of Disney merch this time <laughs> around. Um, so, but it was just one of those, like, wow, this is just a lot of... I do know the pandemic happened, and obviously inflation <laughs> are real. Uh, but it was just really surprising, because in the past, Universal was just not that crazy expensive. So I don't know. Yeah, and then we're going to go into the next topic, which is, I'm going to skip to amount of walking, and then we'll yes. go into The amount of walking that we did between Disney World and Universal, I think that because we did two parks in one day, that's probably why we were very exhausted, and our shoes gave out because it mm -hmm. was, I was, um, I didn't bring my Asics, which I'm flat-footed, so my shoe, my feet were killing me, and I had to get... We got slippers, which were $28 a piece, and they yes. were not great. No. They hurt. They were made of leather, so I don't recommend... I recommend that you bring extra shoes. If your shoes do get wet and socks, um, make sure that you don't forget to wear, like, good rubber shoes. Because the walking between Universal Studios and um, Islands is different. Like... Because we only went to one park in Disney World, we didn't walk as much. We did walk a lot, but it felt like it wasn't a lot, a lot. Yes. Like, we didn't hurt as bad. Um, but yeah. Yeah, no, um, I have gone to Disney parks, all four parks, in one day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I think that there's just, I don't know what it was this trip that... I was more exhausted, and I've done Universal, you know, before twice, like, both parks in a day. I just think that Universal is very big, 
And I know Disney is big. Now, don't don't think I don't know that they're big. It's just Universal. I think there's just so much going on that it can get overwhelming very fast. Yeah. Very fast. Yeah. I, I think that there's mm -hmm. just a lot going on between the different sides of Universal, the different, uh, you know, kind of like... Harry Potter world and Dr. Yeah. Seuss land and everything is just a lot and then it's fun but it's just can get overwhelming especially if you are there like on a weekend that is a lot of people in one area it can be a lot mm -hmm. so it's just different like we were in line for so long and I think that's another thing because like when you're flat footed your feet are literally like in her feet her normal feet you're standing in line for so long, so your legs are literally, like, stagnant for a very long time, and I guess that it swelled her feet up really bad. Mm. And another thing, because we were stuck at the Hogwarts Express ride for two hours, like, sometimes we were standing a little bit longer than we should have, we should have sat down. But it was bad on my feet. Like, I, my whole body was hurting from carrying everything. Like, we were carrying a lot of stuff, yes. we were doing a lot of stuff, we were moving a lot. So we had a lot of, I don't know, like, our walking was worse in Universal. Yes. So... That's another thing. Um, but yeah. Our overall experience, though, um, we. Oh. <laughs> Hi, Lily. <laughs> Sorry, her phone's being wacky. Uh, overall, we do like Universal. We're not, like, haters of Universal. We are obviously very big Harry Potter fans. So, Harry Potter for us, Diagon yeah. Alley, everything. That's kind of like. Was amazing for us. That, yeah, like that that experience itself, like Harry Potter yes. World, is like, the best part about it. I think um, everything else kind of was like like the Velocicoaster was a lot of fun. Yes, um, it was scary as hell, but it was fun. <laughs> it was good. It was great. Like if you don't want to, like it's not for kids. Like it's more of like for adults. Yes. So I think that's why it we was were, intense. We weren't used to like the coasters because mm -hmm. at Disney World or at like Magic Kingdom it's mostly just little kids rides and really cute like there's no thrill or adrenaline it's mostly mm -hmm. just yeah but we were we went on big coasters and we did a lot of stuff and we got to meet characters and meet Spider-Man which was my favorite um we got to do a lot of things we got to do um the interactive wand thing and she did really good in, in doing I the wand spells that. um I think we will go again not in any time soon um, yeah, not. maybe soon, just because we do have the pass, like, free pass, but if anybody wants those, we can definitely have yeah, to, give them away. we can give them away, um, for a great price of $5, I'm kidding, just, I'll give them to you, <laughs> yeah. um, yeah. but we are, we would go again, just because, again, we do love Jurassic World, and we do love Harry Potter, but because we have... Marvel in Disney, and they have executed their Marvel section a lot better than mm -hmm. Universal has. Um, I don't think that we'd go to Universal as much as we would go to Disney World. Basically, yeah. I don't know. For me, I liked Disney World more. Like, you really felt the magic, and yes. you really felt like people cared. I felt like at Universal, the workers just didn't want to be there. Yeah, they all felt like they all like just did not like their jobs. They all like were tired, <laughs> and I get it. I get it's, it. It's hot outside. It's but... hot, and it's it's hard. It's just that at Universal or at Disney World, they're just more they're caring to their customers. Um, they care about um, the food. They care about mm -hmm. the comfort. They care about oh, do you need anything? But at, at Universal, it just felt like you know you were just kind of there. Like you yes. bought things. But... I mean, we go to theme parks for the experience yeah. of being in a theme park. If we wanted to just go to any theme park, we would literally go to Fun Spot in Orlando or, like, do something like, you know, Six Flags or Bush Gardens. For us, we are very big on magic and making us feel like we're young again. The only portion of Universal that does that for us is Harry Potter Land because we're such big fans. Other than that, we don't we didn't really feel a lot of the magic. I was saying to her a lot of times, I'm like, you know, now that I think about it, I'm so confused with half of the the different themes in Universal. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't like, know what's going on. For example, like in Islands of Adventure, you have the, the big park, which is the superhero island. Yes. Then it goes into Toon Lagoon, or like 
the comic, like the old, really old comics, like Betty Bob, Betty Boo, Boo, Betty Boo, <laughs> Betty Boo, Popeye, like, and it's just like what? And then it goes it into gets, what the Greek thing? It goes into the Greeks. Greek uh, mythological yeah, thing. and then Jurassic. Um, yes, and I, then, yeah. I will say that it we I'm I am okay with like the whole you know monster section because. Universal is made, is known for their movies, and, like, the movie yeah. section is fine, yeah, but studios, yeah. there's some stuff that I, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, man, I really don't know why, why they have this in the section, or, um, yeah, but that's about that. Yeah, um, like, the makeup horror show was yes, enjoyable. Yes, that. That was, that was fun. Very like, fun. I liked, actually, it's weird, because I thought I would like islands more but actually i like universal studios more because i'm a huge movies fan yes and we got to like go into we got to watch the makeup horror show which i've never seen and she's never seen and it was so much fun it was funny we got to actually see things that we've never i've never because i love like movies and love productions of movies and universal is, is a big you know movie producer production company and they really did teach us a lot and it was really funny and then we also had like you know the tribute store which i've been wanting to go to It like which bottle? The Dasani bottle. It like moved. Anyway. <laughs> oh my god. What the fuck? That's weird. Anyway, so then yeah, so we got to go to the tribute store, which was so cool because there was an E. T. section and there was like a Jaws section. And yeah, I honestly really liked Universal Studios more. I think it was more laid back because there wasn't as many yes. coasters. But <laughs> Islands is just insane. Like, I don't know. It's not a good idea to go on a holiday, for sure. No. Um, but, no, no. yeah, we had a good time, though. It was good. I mean, we sound like we're complaining. Yeah. But, honestly, like, we just like to review a lot of these. Uh, hopefully, we would love to review different kinds of um, experiences and places for you guys. Um, I would like to, you know make a list of different experiences that we saw there's a Crayola experience in Orlando that we think would be very fun to review mm -hmm. and kind of show you guys like you know merch from there um we're going to Aquatica soon so I have not been since I was 10 or 11 have yeah. you ever been I've been but I was like really young 13 I think yes so it's been a while and now Aquatica is the water park for SeaWorld. Yep. Um, so we stay tuned for that. We will be going in the end of July for that. Um, and then hopefully in August we're able to do one more summer trip before we get into the fall. And then... Yeah. And it's crazy because the time is going by so quickly. And yes. It's almost October again and Christmas and Thanksgiving, so... And September's our one year. So yeah, we will so... definitely be doing something... Hopefully. ...fun... Yeah, we're gonna go, I think we're gonna go to a park or do something, Hopefully. something cute, I don't know, maybe go back to that Beauty and the Beast restaurant or something. Oh, that would be really sweet, that'd be really sweet. Yeah, that was great, that, um, I love that. Yeah, so our trip was very enjoyable, we also did go into the Enchanted Rose, we are both big fans of <laughs> Beauty and the Beast. Funny. Um, yeah. so we went to the Grand Floridian. It was a little bit of a mm -hmm. doozy getting in there, um, you do not need to be staying in the Grand Floridian to go to the Enchanted Rose, but you do have to be 21 and over. They are open between 5 to 11 p.m. They do offer some food, um, and they do offer, obviously, alcoholic beverages. They are a little bit on the pricier side, because, again, it's Disney, and it is in the Grand Floridian. But it was a very nice experience, nonetheless. Um, yes? So, yeah. What is... Did they finish cooking? Are they... Did they finish cooking? Are they cooking it right now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Anyway, yeah, it was great. We have to cut out a lot of things because <laughs> I know. Yeah, but it was it was great. I think that you know, depending on your preferences, if you're more of a child at heart, Magic Kingdom is an universal. I don't know. It depends on what you we're, like. We're we're both more children at heart. <laughs> yeah. We're very big on magic aspect. We love Disney. I'm so thankful that I have a girlfriend that loves. All things Disney, all things Harry Potter, Marvel, all this other stuff. It's fun because oh, yeah. we're able to do a lot of it, have a lot of experiences oh, yeah. together. Yeah. Another thing that really made me mad was that 
the photo oh. the photo the photo thing yes oh the that heck? we did I don't know about the photos so with Ugh, um with the Disney app because I do have the uh, I know the password holder. Yeah. <laughs> I'm able to get free photos whenever we do take them with one of the people on you know what is that the photographers in the main yeah street. so it's different because they it's have different we're able to get that yeah they like literally like in universal they give you a card and then it a little you card. just have to like barcode it and i tried but it didn't, it work. didn't work and then i think this the photos are way more expensive but i think yeah because you have a pass it's just free but you just have to buy like the photos itself like you don't have to pay for like a package to get the photos Yes, so <clears throat> it was it was I definitely know. an interesting experience. <laughs> it was interesting. That is about it. Um, yeah, this is probably a long video. Anything else? No, I think I'm good. All right, well, we will see you guys next time, and I hope you guys have a great day. Peace out.